gracious. You lead the way, maestro. Alrighty. Y'all know the drill. <coughs> no Hangover Podcast. How y'all doing today? Goddamn. Oh, I, don't know why. I still don't know why you do that. You're supposed to do that when you drink like liquor and oh, stuff. But that's it, just so it, nasty. Like, the olfactory is in your nose and it helps it take it down easier and it like, because your taste buds, your nose, all that it's shit. It's already like, like prepared for it. Yeah, like there's some fucking... There's some, yeah, way. there's it's something behind it, but you're supposed to do that before I mean, you drink liquor and shit. Like you see when people drink wine, they put their nose yeah. to it. Or I mean whiskey, like, like connoisseurs, like they spin it and all that. Yeah, so try to let it hit all the taste buds. We're just degenerates who plus you know, like take shots I'm not gonna that. lie, I, I never fucking understood let it hit all the taste buds. Like, oh, duh, that's just going in my mouth. Like yeah. it's not that fucking big of a place. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's gonna hit all the taste. It buds. reminds me of like the uh, the ice cream. Yeah, beer. hit all thousand taste bud. <laughs> it just keeps doing that. I'm like, <laughs> I can see that with ice cream. That's one thing. You know that tastes good. You would want to. Well, alcohol. According to everybody else, alcohol tastes good. Look, it tastes good. See, alcohol. I've been. That's the one pushback that everyone gives me. That I drink alcohol because I'm an adult, not because I like it. I mean, it, and people are like, yeah. oh well, no, whiskey drinking or for, this or that tastes for good. The effects. Yes. Versus drinking for the taste. I've never like drink alcohol for the taste. I drink for. I mean, I don't mind. Like, I like it, but at the same time, it's not like, oh, this is the greatest tasting. I like it. Like, I don't. I, I don't drink whiskey because I'm like, oh, the taste is so amazing. I prefer whiskey's taste versus other alcohols' taste, like rums or tequila. Um, like, I prefer whiskey, where's, but where's the rum? That was actually pretty good. Oh uh, uh, shit! Shout out to fucking good old Captain Jack. Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Pirates, treasure. Pirates of the Caribbean won't be the same without Isn't him. Isn't that the fucking dessert at Miller's Ale House? Captain Jack Sparrow treasure. Uh, Captain Jack's, yeah. Do you think it's based off Captain Jack Sparrow? It might be. If it's not, it must be another famous Jack. Besides Jack Daniels. I was just about to, I was thinking, it's like, what fucking, but that's whiskey anyways. It's not even rum. Uh, fuck, I was going to say something. Doesn't matter. All right. Doesn't matter. Lost your train of thought, huh? Sure did. Sure did. Well, what would, uh, this is random. Didn't even think of talking about this today, but if you were to drink any alcohol, what's your preferred alcohol? Tequila? At the moment, yeah. Tequila has been, uh. <clears throat> been my go-to little tequila pineapple little splash of like sprite or some soda to give a little tss, fizz but yeah i mean the i'll bubbles. still drink dark i try not to i've been trying to cleanse your be body as healthy as i can and not that i even drink that much but like if i'm gonna drink something I'll, you know mm. dark, li- dark liquor is worse for you than clear liquor so oh, i'll drink my fair share so same same i lived with you yeah. and i lived with jordan twice yeah so that, <laughs> that alone will get you <laughs> so you know dark liquor was plentiful yeah in our house i mean we in both house in both the apartment and the house we had fucking collection of bottles that's true that is true the fucking Bolton Ben one, there was literally just alone fucking in the first year, like fucking 25, 30 bottles of Hennessy. Oh and that's just Henny. Yeah, that was more than that. Because y'all Dude, filled up all those fuck, cabinets. Yeah, in the, in the fucking garage. That shit was wild. And there's yeah. also Crown in there. There's fucking, I know there's a couple bottles of 1800, but it was a majority. Very few and far between. It was a majority Henny, Hennessy. And I don't, I'm not even, I don't, I think Hennessy is overrated. Cognac. It's uh, you know, obviously it's popular. That's more of a culture, <laughs> cultural thing. Yeah, it is. Than a uh, than actually the, good. the pure taste of henny. I like mean, again, drink. back to the original point: the pure taste yeah. of alcohol fucking sucks it's, ass. It's so. true. <laughs> like, <laughs> but the taste of henny versus you know, for example, some of the other whiskeys are Scotch. Like whiskey. I like Johnny Walker. Not a lot of people do because it's more of a. It's a blend, yeah. a whiskey Scotch blend. Yeah. But there's also you know different tiers. I know of that it. because I'm an adult, boom, and I drink alcohol solely for that reason. Because imagine like going to a fucking party, everyone's like, "Oh, let me get some. Uh, can I get a lemonade? You want that spike? Nope, just lemonade. Let me I get mean, some apple juice. 
I mean, but yeah. Which I will say, Gion did put type. me on to fucking Henny and apple juice. That's actually a pretty good mix. Whiskey and apple juice is good. Yeah. Uh, I actually tried, what did I drink that with? Uh, Chivas. You ever tried Chivas with the whiskey? Uh-uh. Well, I tried that with Jupina. Couldn't, couldn't taste the fucking. That's pretty good stuff. It was. Sprite and Aguardiente is pretty good. There you go. Even but though Aguardiente by itself tastes like fucking licorice. I don't know how people drink that shit straight. That's wild. I don't know how people drink a lot of shit straight. Oh, uh, well. I prefer, uh, I guess on <laughs> that note, huh? Oy, and it's tequila out of all things. <sighs> Cheers, mate. Beautiful. So no hangover. <sighs> These glasses, oh, God. they seem bigger than they actually are. This is actually just probably one shot. It looks like it's a double, though, but it's only just one. I left some at the bottom. That's even nastier. The backwash. I had a little flavor from the weekends that, that I ate. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> well, her fighting for my life. Uh, that was actually pretty easy. You're getting soft on me, Jacob. I guess so. That shit was hot. Bro. Burn my insides a little bit. Fucking raise the temperature in this room a little bit. <laughs> All right, what's uh what's first on the docket? First on uh, bullshit. Well, I guess we could talk about fucking trash ass uh, Boston Celtics. Told you, Boston in five. You did call it. So. Also, I don't want to get into this too much because we're gonna get into it a little bit later, and I don't, still don't want to get into it that much then. But I'm back on my Connor's not ever fighting again train. Well, look at this. Because <laughs> that was literally the day that we recorded that. The next day, yep, he's out. <laughs> Not yeah. fighting anymore. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Your predictions have been pretty well lately. Yeah. What's your... You've been you've been sports betting lately? Because no, you've not. been on your shit with your I predictions. Not, bro. You the called... Funds have been... You called uh, Boston in five. I did. And Granted, they were already up 2-0 at that point, but I did... I, I already thought they were going to win in five. But when I, like... Yeah, when you actually made my declaration. Correct. When you said it on the podcast, they they were, were it was already on game two. But And, yeah, Boston. I mean, it already at that point, it looked like the Mavs were just outmatched, outmanned, yeah. outnumbered. Luca. I mean, he had 28 last night again. I mean, he averaged probably like 30 points. Yeah. Luca, Luca balled out. I mean, for the... Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie only had one good game. He had 15 game four. last game, yeah. I mean, but the Mavs had only one good game. If we're looking yeah. at it like that, <laughs> that was the only good game they but, had. But no, not a, not even his uh, blowout game. They lost on Kyrie's good game when he had thirty-one. Oh when Luka yeah, that's out. right. That's right. And they lost. So, well, yeah. Congrats to the Boston Seas. Yeah, um, fuck them. Still fuck them. You know, but everybody. And they're the doing thing historic is, is things because now, I mean, they were in a four-year tie with the Lakers. And now, oh, yeah, now Boston is the sole owner of the most, most titles, titles in NBA history with 18 for a franchise. And um, you know that makes all of the Laker fans, Laker Nation, makes them all. And ideas. I just saw a meme that they won in 2008 and in 2024. Yep, doesn't so sit right with Laker fans. Both Kobe numbers, RIP. But um, yeah, so I mean that Celtics Lakers rivalry just runs deeper than basketball. Oh, yeah, so. I mean, you saw Magic Johnson was like, "I'm pissed off tonight." Like, <laughs> he's like, "I freaking hate Boston." But I mean, I mean, when you go against a team that much, I mean, there's always going to be that level of. I'm sure they respect each other. I'm also to, but they also hate each other to the core. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with any if with any good competition, there is a level of respect. But yeah, you don't have to like them. Correct. But there is like, oh, you're fucking good. That's why you're constantly in my way, so I respect it. Well, fuck I you. mean, this year was, I mean, it's always a toss-up. You never know when it comes to the NBA. But this year, Boston from the jump was favored to win it because, I mean, they were the best team all yeah. year. No. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like, they were. Like, they, there was no doubt that they were the deepest team. They're, they, I mean, along with being, like, top-heavy as far as their starting five, they have – Again, the depth to go with it. Yeah, they had a. They've a been, you know, they've been, you know, the one, two. They've been seed in con- yeah, they've been in contention for the past, for the past five, five years. I mean, honestly, since fucking 2018. Honestly, yeah, they've been in the finals. I mean, Jason Tatum's rookie. Or not he the fucking finals, but yammed on fucking LeBron James in the conference finals, like yeah. fucking all over his face. It's one so, time. Yeah, but it was 
a rookie Jason Tatum over 2018 LeBron James in that playoff True, run. But he did come, you know, LeBron came late to help, and Jason was already up there. Got fucking... LeBron Miami dunked on, on their whole team when he knocked him out, so... Yeah, well, yeah, Probably. LeBron got the last laugh, but still, rookie Jason Tatum coming in and, you know, and kind doing of that type of him. shit. Yeah, fucking. I mean, hey, I wish he would have done more of that in this fight. I wish he would have fucking yammed on someone in this playoff run, but... Well, Let's get into that, actually. Um, so you saw, as Boston did win, Jason Tatum, the star piece of the Boston Celtics, wasn't the name the finals MVP. Nope. It was Jalen Brown. Brown. That dog. But uh, out of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who do you think is better? Well, I mean, I think as just a pure basketball talent, I think – Jason Tatum's better. I think he has a better looking game. I think it's more fluid. His shot is he is a, like he's just naturally a better basketball player. But Jalen Brown is just hyper athletic, and I mean, again, in his you know we, we people will want to say whatever they want, but he was a third overall pick in the NBA. So oh, like, no. yeah, he's a star. You know, he's a bona fide star. Again, coming out of the draft, both players. You know, they were in different drafts, one right after the other. Jason Tatum was first overall pick, right? Mm-hmm. And he was, again, like a basketball prodigy. Like he, you know, to Duke, he's got you know. 6'9", he's got the length, he's got the athleticism. You know, again, his Except game comes from Duke. His game is a little bit more fluid. Like, yeah, it was a lot. It was more of just like, uh, you know, like he was like born to do it. Like he was, you know, groomed to, to play, be a basketball player. And he, you know, he exhibits that. Jalen Brown coming out of Cal was just viewed as a very fucking hyper athletic guy that, you know, and in the NBA too, like, you know, the draft is a lot less if, cause in the NFL, like it's, it's still very hit or miss, but in the NBA, I feel like it's a lot more hit or miss. Like, it's like, you don't really know what you're getting. Like you could be a top three pick and still like people won't be surprised if you don't really pan out to be something. So there well, is true. that, I feel there like is it's that a element of it too. To so get. like, I feel like in that draft that Jalen Brown was drafted third overall, like people were kind of looking at it as a weak draft. People were looking at it as like, well, you know, he was just kind of the best of what was coming out of that year. And, you know, if he becomes a serviceable, serviceable player, then they got their, you know, they got their money's worth. He just ended up, you know, exceeding a lot of people's expectations. True. Well, plus, I mean, going back to what you just said, I feel like the NBA is a little easier to predict than the Ooh, NFL. I don't know. On a player? I on feel player, like... I don't know. I mean, it's hard because, for instance, I'll, I'll go off this. Uh, I'll use Austin Rivers as an example. Austin Rivers, amazing high school player. Amazing. One of the best fucking high school mixtapes ever. Goes to... Shout out to Winter Park High goes School, Goes to baby. college. Great Duke player. Yeah. Fucking... Hit you that know, game winner against North Carolina. Yeah, in fucking had a great college career. Goes to the NBA... Not action. saying he wasn't a great player, but he was never a star. No, he's, he, he was. No, well, he no. I mean, if you look at what his route to the NBA was and what his, his trajectory versus what he did, yeah, no, he would. He would. He was a bust in the NBA. Yeah, he was. You know, I mean, he had a good career overall, but he was a role player at the end of the day. I mean, he was. I mean, he might have started for a few seasons, but because he was, he was a he role was, player. Him and Anthony Davis were picked on the same draft going to New Orleans, and. Obviously, Anthony Davis, you know, we see what he's turned out to be. Yeah. You know, he's he the fact that he hasn't won a defensive player of the year is still kind of. Shocking. Yeah, they do. They do kind of fuck with but, him about that because he he's he gets his blocks. I mean, he gets rebounds. He gets I mean, blocked. he's a great fucking defensive player. Like yeah. if you could fucking say he always anything, has been in yeah. college too. Bro, in that, college. They, you know, you ever seen that statistic where they show Anthony Davis's blocks versus every other school's yeah. blocks? Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, college, no, he was Anthony a Davis, for as much as you want to talk shit about him, or Being not, brittle. not you specifically, yeah, but in general. The media. Yeah, like, you know, he's still a great talent, great he's defensive a, he's player. He's a top five defensive player. Great, you know, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's got the ring, you know. He's got injuries, points. Injuries aside, like, he's going to have all the stats and the accolades besides the defensive player of the year, which he should have. But who knows? Maybe, you to, know, he, maybe he'll get to it To be a Hall day. of Famer. I mean, at this point, how old is he now? He's... He's what, getting up there. He's getting to, you know, his 30s. But in the NBA, I feel like a lot of players. Docking. Look that up on Urban Dictionary if you get a chance, people. Docking. Um, <laughs> in his in NBA careers, I feel like that 28, 27, 28 to like 32, that's like a prime NBA player right there. They've, he is 31 years old. 
So he's he's in the he's in the tail end of his prime of his athletic prime. Yeah, he's got but, probably one or two more prime years. Yeah. And, and given then, like you know, and he's a big man, so yeah, that's it's kind of harder. He's to, had injuries, yeah, so given lot. like you know, given the state of you know where athletics are now, you know, with the nutrition, with the rehabbing, all that shit, you know, he probably has a solid. I'll give him until about thirty five. Given just his career, his injuries, everything until he really starts, you know. Slowing down. Yeah. But he is, I think 32 for him is going to be like, you know, 31, 32 this next year is going to be, you know, we're going to start seeing more steady decline by the time he gets 35. Like, well, we'll know. see. I mean, maybe he'll tone it down and only be like, <laughs> instead of, cause he's kind of offensively heavy still. Like he's looked at as like your LeBron's second option. You need to score a lot. So maybe he'll take a lesser role and be like more of the defensive well, presence he can't, on this current Lakers roster. He cannot do that. He is. He needs to be their first option. Well, correct. I'm saying, like, say he was surrounded with pieces. This okay. is all hypothetical, but I'm just saying, as a player, he could probably, possibly, if he gets the right pieces around him, take that offensive step back, and he could possibly still, you know, basically make his impact on the defensive end for a couple of years. Mm. But um, going off of L.A. real quick, going back to the Jason Tatum versus yeah. Jalen Brown. Well, okay, to answer that question, I do think Jason Tatum is a better is a better talent. Again, you know, and once you get to this point in any professional sport, you know, football, basketball, soccer, fighting, you know, baseball, whatever, the, whatever sport it is, you know, at this point you're splitting hairs. Like, there is – this much that separates the best guy, the number one guy from the 50th guy. True. From the 50th guy to the fucking 150th guy. So at that point, you're really spreading hairs because everyone's in the league. Everyone's athletic. Everyone has accolades. Everyone was the fucking number one player in their class or the fucking number one player coming out of their state. You know, all state this, Mr. Basketball that, you know, all this shit. So, you know, I do think, like I said, I do think Jason Tatum is the better talent, but... Again, it seems like Jalen Brown has more of that dog mentality. And, I mean, he's vocalized it even during this playoff run as far as, like, not getting the credit that he deserves, feeling like people undermine him, people feel, feeling like people are not, you know, really giving him his flowers. And, you know, good for him. He won the fucking Eastern Conference Finals MVP and the Finals MVP. So he's, you know, he's shutting people up. Yeah. Well, but I asked. I was that. talking to uh, because I watched the game with Jordan yesterday. So you know we're you know we're watching it whatever, and I'm in my head uh, when I said it out loud. I'm like, well, you know, this is just one ring, and now we're looking into the future a little bit. What if they win another one, and then Jason Tatum wins Finals MVP and Eastern Conference Finals MVP next year? Which then we're possible. having we're having a whole different conversation at this point yeah. because we already are looking at Jason Tatum as the more superior basketball player, like as far as just pure talent. Well, pure talent. And like when people talk about, think about it, when they're always talking about the league, right? Oh, who's the face of the league? Who's the best in the league? Jason Tatum has been in the top 10 of the best in the league for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown's not even in that conversation. I mean, where would you put him? He's a top 20 player. Top 20, maybe. 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 Yeah. I think, but, it's, I think, you I mean, easily, I think, I think he is. I, I think, think easily he is. you can put him top 15 easily. I mean, once you get to that 12 to, I mean, and after this, after this run too, you could probably put him a little bit higher. I mean, you can make the argument for it, but it might be in the, after he might this be run, in the you can put him like 12 right to eight for me. And I, and I think eight would be a little bit too high, but you can make the well, argument. Well, considering you say eight, but depending on the person you ask, LeBron is the eight in the NBA right now. Yeah. And, and, and again, that's and that's the beautiful thing about you know lists and you know yeah. top whatever all, players. It, it is you know you can make the argument for it. I personally still think that LeBron James is probably seven at worst. Well, just to mess with this argument a little more, Jason Tatum right is in that top ten argument. Doesn't win Finals MVP, but you go through the numbers they put up in the finals. <laughs> Jason Tatum actually had more points, more rebounds, more assists. He averaged everything he wasn't, better. He wasn't as efficient as far as like shooting percentage. He wasn't as like efficient, that. but I would say going off of that, I think why Jalen Brown won the finals MVP was he didn't necessarily have the bigger numbers, but his games felt more impactful. He well, was scoring more impactful. Like think about that game. Uh, what was it? Game two or game 
Game three in Dallas. When he had the uh, bunch of like the uh, like well, game, I think it was game one that he fucking yammed all over everyone. He yeah, had that big ass dunk. It was but game one was, or game two. He well, he yammed a couple times in the series, yeah. but he was like taking the wind out of Dallas, basically. Yeah, and I was watching uh, Colin Coward today, and he said that like in the big moments, they were deferring to Jalen Brown to take the shot. To yeah, take the they big were shot. they were letting him kind of, and he was making them, and he yeah. was you know he was he was making the they shots. They were letting him do his thing. So I mean, again, like. I've been on it for a while. I think, you know, I've always been, I've been a Jalen, a Jalen Brown fan since he came out of college. I always thought that he didn't get his flowers. And I did think that, you know, although Jalen or Jason Tatum is to me the better talent, I think Jalen Brown, you know, he's overcome a lot and he's exceeded expectations. Like no one thought that he was going to be what he is right now. Like, yeah, they didn't think, I don't, I don't think many people had him winning finals MVP. No. You know, I mean, I don't think team. a lot. I don't think a lot of people had him being the second option on this. On like in the long well, run, if you in the long run, maybe not because I mean they've been saying for years, oh they're not winning, blow it up, blow it up, mm-hmm. and you know Boston, you know credit to Brad Stevens for knowing what he had in his in his locker room to, you know he went from coaching them to the GM. you know GM role, and he said no, let's get some more pieces around them, let's help Jason Tatum out. By giving him, you know, deferring the offense, so it's not just resting on his shoulders. Yeah, and look what they became. I well, mean, the, the number one fucking too, team like, in the they East. They have three. I mean, fucking four. I mean, five. They have Six. like as far as like two way players that not only are they getting their buckets on the offensive end, but they're committed defensively to Porzingis, play defense. Drew Holiday, White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Yeah, that's five players right there that are you know make their money basically by being great two-way players. Yeah. They're not only looking for as a, you know, a bucket, but they're getting back on defense, trying to make that defensive presence mm-hmm. felt, trying to be a, make defensive stops. And at the end of the day, defense wins basketball. I mean, defense wins every sport. Defense wins games. You got to make a stop. Everyone, and that's the thing, especially nowadays. Anyone yeah. can get points. Anybody yeah. can get a touchdown. Shootouts are all Anybody good. Anybody can make a three-point shot. Anybody can, but like, it's who's going to be able to make the Who's going to make the most stops. Yeah. And... And that, As they did to Dallas, clearly they beat the shit out of Dallas, and it wasn't because they just straight out scored them. They did in two games; they blew them out. But on, for instance, the game three victory, that was they got a couple key defensive stops, managed to get a bucket or two, and boom, they win the game. Yeah, because the series would be a lot different if they were going into game five two two. Yeah, but you know that's it's a game of runs, and they managed to withstand the storm and close out they were you know they were up 21 and dallas goes on a huge run and they've strung together a couple good stops in game three Mm -hmm. you know kill them there go up 3-0 and once you're up 3-0 i mean history shows i mean that no one's gonna do it seven and oh now it was 156 and oh before but now it's 157 and oh but um so congrats to the boston celtics yeah fuck the boston celtics And I then know, just to give a oh, Boston, they suck. Fuck Boston. Yes, this, I'm that, that, that guy. All that other oh, shit. Jesus. Bye, He's talking about me right now because fuck Boston. But I was going to say, but like I said, I mean, they have a, at the end of the day, like they have, that. they have great players on that team. They were the best, you know, going into the season. Everybody thought they were the best team, the deepest team, you know, they were expected to win. I'm sure they were having heavy betting favor going into the season. So they did what they were supposed to and do. They're and favored. now they're favorited to go back season. to back. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they got the monkey off their back. They fucking did what they were supposed to do finally. And now, you know. They've been practicing. Again, one, one you saw they, that uh, graphic? With the empty banner? Yeah, they've, yeah, they've been, been practicing their whole career with that empty banner there. Yeah, and now they're able to fill it. And, finally. you know, now, who knows now? Maybe they get loose and they get, you Yeah, know, more pressure is off of them now. Yeah, so. they, like it's just icing on the cake at this point. So maybe they rip off two, three, you know, four in the next five, six, seven years. Who knows? Because, I mean. They're all relatively young. I mean, their core is all relatively yeah. young. I mean, I know, you know, Derek White is 30. Drew Holiday is in his 30s. Chris Topps almost 30. But Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, at this point, they're just getting into the, the prime of their careers. Yeah, they're 25, 26, so, 27. So, you know, you, you as, as long as you can fill in pieces around them, and I'm, I'm sure at a certain point, they'll be able to carry more of the load. And they won't. I mean, either way, they do the that, you know, that tandem does score in bunches. I mean, they were putting up, you know, they were getting at least together 50 points, 60 points. And I mean, there'll probably be the day comes that they'll probably put up 80 points together. You know, 
I mean, listen, like, especially coming out of the East, you know, the East every year is kind of a toss up and it seems like they got that pretty much on lock. They're going to be a top two seed every year. So, I mean, as, I mean, for, at least for the next five years. So, you know, they, they have a chance to win two or three more. And yeah. I mean, maybe, get, I mean, and I mean, we'd possible. be surprised if we see them go to the finals another three times in the next five years. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, but I would, I, you know, being a Heat fan and just seeing how the East always turns out, I doubt it just because, like you've said in uh, points before, it's besides the, you know, Cavaliers and Warriors going to the finals all those times, it's very rare. The one thing that the, I mean, excluding the Cavs, the one thing that a lot of these teams have that are able to go, you know, several years, you know, several times is that they have depth and they have, they have their star solidified and they have depth. The thing that with Boston is, and I mean, again, we can go back to 2018, 2019, they've had depth and they now do. their stars are, have grown into themselves, have but, grown into their NBA, you know, potential, their NBA bodies, what they're going to be. So it's just a matter of, and again, you know, for, for the most part, Boston has been, you know, especially these last, you know, five, six, seven years, they've been competent is in the front office. They know how to make, you know, Good bring moves, players yeah. in, free agency, trades, things like that. Like, they know what they're doing in the yeah. front office. So it's just a matter of if Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum are going to, you know, be able to continue to coexist, which it seems like they're going to be able to do that for the long I mean, run. Yeah. And their front office they, is able to keep it together, which made it a point to history shows that – their front office has been able to keep it together and make smart moves. So, you know, if 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 not the finals, they're going to be at least you know contending in the East. Every yeah, year. I'm gonna. I'll, I would agree with that. Like they're gonna, they'll be relevant for the next five to seven years. I think they'll be in the playoffs every single year. I think they might be making deep runs, but I just don't know yet because I, I'm not gonna give them that nod of like, oh, they're gonna make the finals every year, yeah. just because we haven't seen it yeah. since you know. LeBron with the with the Cavs or the Warriors and I had said this on record of going back like I don't trust Boston because they've been in a lot of big moments and yes they did you know go to that level but they lost to I mean a bunch of different teams for instance and just the also just how the playoffs have gone Miami and again this is being just a Miami fan <laughs> Miami has lost the last four, four out of the five yeah, times to the eventual NBA champs. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of them things. That's the beautiful thing, you know. We'll see the, what's going, what's what's going to happen this off season, trades, free agency, draft, all that shit, and then, you know, come come September, October time, we'll see what you know how things are are looking. But LeBron and Bronny going to Miami. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> Bold statement. Yeah. That'd be some shit, though. I'd be like, oh, my God. The reunion. If I called that, that'd be some shit. The reunion. Yep. Well, wouldn't be a bad place. But uh, all righty. Going off. Oh, one last thing, just to give this man his credit. Luca, hell of a fucking playoff run. The yeah, first, I the mean. The first player, uh, besides the loss, of course, but first player to have... Uh, average the most points, assists, rebounds, and steals in a postseason. Yeah. So, but that being said, he does need to tighten up, though. He needs to stop bitching so much. He yeah. Needs to be more. Engaged. He needs to get in the lab. He needs to be more on engaged defense. on defense. Yeah. Work and on his be defense. more in shape. Get be in a little better shape. He was banged up. You know, gets get rest. Part rehab. of that is, but the banged up part of that is is not is you know. It seems like he comes into the NBA or he comes into the season like playing his way into shape instead of coming into the season already in shape. That's true. And that is part and of And especially it. when you're making a deep run as he just did. Yeah. Well, and, it, and last year, I mean, they missed the playoffs last year. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, as far as the West, it's all, I mean, it's a toss up every year. I mean, I would, I, I mean, it's not going the, out the on... The NBA a, lately has been a toss-up. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know what's going to happen. It's not going out on a limb to say that I think, obviously, Denver, Minnesota, OKC are going to be, you know, favored to win the West, or at least in in some type of order in that way. I don't really see... Hmm. I mean, OKC has so many, uh, you know, draft picks. They have players that they could trade to bring in other people, things yeah. like that. 
I think the Clippers are going to take a little bit of a. They're not going to be that as good. I don't I see think the Paul Warriors. George is leaving. So it seems like it. That's what it's pointing to. The Warriors. I don't think they're in contention. Lakers. Uh, I don't think. I think Sacramento will be better than they were this year. I think they took they took a little dip from last year. And I think yeah, I don't think the Lakers have year. the money to do it. If Lakers were to do something crazy, I mean, they'd either have to fucking trade AD for a whole new team or fucking. It's you know, for you you don't like to hear, but. Trade LeBron. I don't think they have. I don't, have, I don't, I don't think they I don't can. Mind. Hey, get LeBron out of L.A. They're not going to win shit. I don't I mean they don't have the roster constructed to win anything as it currently sits without yeah. him. So in the next if, years, if they so. can get a shit ton of picks for him or something for him, then yeah, well, I, I mean, mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. Listen, but. I just want to see. I don't care where he has where he lands. I just want to see LeBron win rings wherever it is. I don't give a fuck. I'm a true LeBron fan. Yeah. Well, unless <laughs> it's in Miami. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Let them win in Miami nobody. too. Yeah, then I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, I don't want no one winning yeah, rings. Shit. Oh, Miami or Orlando. Something. I think Orlando's gonna make it. That's the only one. That's the only outlier. I I'll think give. Orlando will be a What th- LeBron a top, has came on. I think next year Orlando will be a top three seed in the East next year. I, I think, think they'll yeah. add a couple. I don't I don't like all the Trey Young shit. I hope they don't trade for him or do no, anything. No, I th- I did like the um the <laughs> The like going after, I don't know about Clay Thompson. No offense to Clay. I mean, I think he's a great player, but I don't know about that. But they did uh, like Tobias Harris. A little, you know, reunion. I mean, I guess. I I don't think they need. Tobias isn't like the star they need, but I mean, he's definitely a good player, you know, and like he's consistent at least. He might not be a star, but like he is a well, consistent Well, I don't NBA think they player. need a star at this point. I think Paolo is that guy. I yeah. think he is. He's the guy that they need he's a he's a number one like a legit number one i think what they need is for jalen suggs and franz to step up a little bit and i think they need better role players as far as like they need they need a little bit more veteran presence whether it's one or two guys to you know whether you know because they had joe ingles so if you trade joe ingles for a clay thompson i think that goes a lot that goes a lot more that goes a longer way than it you know yeah. So little uh, things like that. I don't think they. I, I don't think they need to make with championship pedigree. Yeah, I don't think they need to make a drastic change. Like I said, like a trading for Trey Young, I feel like that could disrupt a lot of shit. Yeah, because he would need. The, I mean, he's a ball dominant guard, but he might also help Paulo as well because that is a good, you know, someone to take take the pressure off of you, but also find you every time. Yeah. So I mean, it could but work I think out. Jalen Su- again, I th- Jalen Suggs from. His rookie year to this year, I think, made a big improvement, especially since he was able to stay healthy. But Jalen Suggs from year two I mean, to year been three. Jalen Suggs for a while. Though. Yeah, I think year two to year three, if he stays healthy, I mean, he's a big dude, six four. He can guard. He could probably guard one through three, and be effective. I know one through two, he can guard three. It might depending on who it is, but he's a big dude. He's athletic, and you know, work on his work on his shot a little bit, his three pointer, make it a little bit more consistent. And I, I mean, you gotta. I mean, he he could be on the you know on the fence of being an all star caliber player. Well, only time will tell. Franz, I mean, another one. He's our. I think he's but already besides, on that cusp too. Besides, you know, too, the so. Miami Heat, Orlando Magic, home city team. You know, of course, if they win, I'd be okay. Yeah. So, I need to go to a Magic game. I haven't been in a while. <laughs> Me either. But uh, on to more sports. Copa America. Boom on Thursday, they open up. The Euros have been going on. I've been watching that. Yeah, I looked into... Uh, granted, I didn't look on every ticket for every, you know, stadium. I just wanted to see what uh, Argentina versus Peru would be because it's down in Miami. I was like, oh, let me look at those prices. $800 for a single ticket in the nosebleeds. That's the Messi effect, baby. Yep. And that's literally what I said. I was like... Damn, just because Messi's playing? Yep. Fuck. Yep. I mean, I could look at, there's or uh, there's games being played right here in Orlando. Uh, granted, it wasn't as great of teams, of course. No. But. Well, I don't give a fuck what the tickets are looking like in 2026. I'm getting a ticket to a World Cup game, and I'm fucking going. I don't give a shit. I'll fucking. You're going to just pay yeah. whatever? Whatever. If I have to give Let's them a see. fucking arm. Uh, Bolivia might. versus Panama is in Orlando. Uh, you got Canada versus Chile. Chile, your boy Alexis Sanchez. I know he doesn't play anymore, but that's where he's yep. from. Yep. Let's see. Any other games in Orlando? 
I think those might be the only two. Brazil and oh, U.S. No. played a Bolivia last no. week. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I think it's only two games in Orlando. Yeah, but I mean that's Messi. I mean they're gonna they're gonna he's gonna generate. I would love to see Messi play once in my life just because that'd be cool. Well, the last two, the last the few times that Miami has come to Orlando, well, he's been hurt he hasn't, or just he hasn't, hasn't played. played. Yeah, the last time I saw a lot of people on because I saw like. Like on like Instagram and Snapchat and shit, people are like, oh, I'm gonna go see Messi, and I'm like, no, you're not. They already ruled he's not even. He didn't even travel with the team. And that was what like maybe like two weeks ago. A I month feel like ago. you'd have to go down to Miami if you want to see him. Yeah, to get f- to get a legit chance to see him. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like he's definitely playing more at home than for sure anywhere else. But oh, I do. Sure. I would like to see him once in my life. I got an Argentina jersey now, but with the three then stars, again, baby. I won't have FOMO either way. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, like, FOMO for me has never really been a thing. Like, when I was younger, I would get it occasionally, but, like, I'll get over it so quickly. Like, I know, I like. I've done a lot of cool shit in my life. I'm like, exactly. I'm not, <laughs> like, I've done I'm not going to stress over the couple shit. things I didn't get yeah, to do. Yeah, honestly. Like, and, like, at the end of the day, like, what am I really like? It's a sporting oh event. Like, it's I'm a missing out event. on going this place or watching yeah. this thing. Like, I mean, not to be big fucking know, sound, sound weird or anything, but it's like, am I really going to cry over not seeing a grown ass man play a, g- a game? <laughs> like, <For real>. no, <laughs> I am not. That's wild. Though. That's something fine. I never understood, though, how people get FOMO so bad. And they're just like, I oh mean, my we, God. It's like, we've, uh, we've talked about this before, though. People put and I gra- granted Messi is in a different caliber. I mean, that man is on another yeah. stratosphere when it comes to his, you know, accolades in his sport. But. The way people idolize and freaking yeah. put people so high on a pedestal just for, like you've you've made the exact comment for throwing a ball good or for shit like that. And it's like, yeah, I don't understand it. I don't either. I just don't. I mean, I don't, don't get me either. wrong. Football, like my fandom goes all over the place when it comes to sports. I'm a Miami Heat basketball fan, but I'm a Buffalo Bills football fan. So like, yeah, I would love to see you know Josh Allen and the Bills play. Never been to an NFL game, but at the same time, like I'm not gonna. Yeah, see, I want to go to an Eagles game again. I've been to one, but I, I plan on going this year. I yeah, but that's just like I have to make a full trip out of it. Yeah. I got to fly to Buffalo. Well, the thing I is, like, I have I, my cousin lives in Philly, so I would already have a place to stay and shit like that. I would literally gonna, just have to pay for my plane ticket. I mean, I guess I ticket. could call my mom's cousins. <laughs> yeah. Probably stay somewhere in Chill Buffalo. with the fam. Be like, oh, what's good? I haven't seen you yeah, guys in fucking you ever. But like, no, I, I, we've, <laughs> I've seen them, but it's been a I haven't long been to time. Buffalo in a very long time. Never been. Probably I haven't been to never go. shit. I haven't. <laughs> I mean, the only time I've said this before, I've never been to New York City once in my life. I've been in New York a bunch of times, but been I've been to, New to York upstate City New York like five or six times. And it's pretty cool. I've like, it's fun. But like, oh, again, like shit like that. Like, I'm just like, all right, it's just a whole bunch of fucking buildings. Like, oh, I've never I been to the city. Go, and like, it's not I the like same more scale. Nature. Yeah, it's not the same scale, but it's like I can go to downtown Orlando and see a bunch of fucking buildings. I can yeah. go to fucking downtown. I like, any I like downtown. nature better than like a trip like that. But even then, too, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just fucking weird and I don't really fucking give a shit about seeing a lot of stuff. No, I feel, more, like, I feel me, like you should definitely get out of Florida more and venture yeah, out, for go sure, more but west. Like, for me, it's more of like the who I'm spending it with, like where I'm True. going, who I'm going with. Like, like I went to Tennessee on a cousin trip last year it was me my cousins my sister all that and it was in it was in the woods we got an airbnb a cab and all that shit it was nice it was fucking it was fucking nice nice scenery and all that shit but i don't remember it because oh look at the scenery like we're in the mountains i remember it because i was with my sisters i was with my cousins they had brought their significant others like that's why i remember it like yeah and that's i mean uh, that's like i don't most of the reason like on the trip i went with helen for instance when we went to utah we went snowboarding. We went, you know, to see uh, Arches National Park. Saw a bunch of rocks. Yeah. You know, like, am I going to remember the rocks? Probably not. But I'm going to remember spending that time with Helen traveling. When we went on the fucking cruise for Abner's Bachelor. It's like, I've been on cruises before. Like, it's not the... Fa- oh, I mean, yeah, we're on a fucking... Get off the boat, though, one day. Yeah, I was like, fuck that. Like, because the fucking... The smart private man. islands are fucking like little They're cocoa the same, shit. It's just shit. a little fucking, like... It's like going to Wet and Wild or some shit. Without any sense. of the fucking water slides yeah. or any of that shit. It's like a... It's like a little private beach. Yeah. Nice water, though. But, like, but. I don't... Yeah, it was fun. We went on a cruise, but it's not like... I was like, oh, yeah, like, I got to go on a cruise. Like, no, nah, I went on a cruise with my fucking boys, and we fucking yeah. 
had fun. We were drinking, doing dumb shit, like just hanging out with my fucking gambling boys. like degenerates. <laughs> For real. So like, I don't know. Like, Off topic, but I've been wanting to talk about it. gambling. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got to go gambling lately. Let's gamble with our lizards. Shot. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> I did not see this going that way. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> uh, you shit. sick fuck. But, um, yeah, I don't know why. I did get in a... This was like a, probably a month, two months ago. I got into where my Instagram feed was nothing but fucking roulette and blackjack videos. Yeah. That algorithm was, no, it like, was you need to gamble. Literally. It was we like. know what you like. I was watching different <laughs> strategies. I was like, ah, oh, shit. I was like, ah, oh, shit. I'm going to spend some money. But <laughs> I didn't. I didn't go gambling. So that's good. But. Come on. You said you were gambling, man. There's not really. You have to travel to at least Daytona or Tampa to go gamble. I'd say Tampa. Hard Daytona, Rock in Tampa. or a Daytona Hard Rock. Or is there? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Does it got like live tables though? I think so. They turn a hard so I like I like live roulette tables. But blackjack's always fun too. Woo. Oh Christ. Salut. So no hangover again. Uh, oh, that one was a little rough. But yeah, yeah. that one went down better, but I've never really been a big gambler. I just like to predict shit. And I like being right. Oh. <laughs> But I guess there's no better way than to do that and really feel like you're the shit than being right and winning money. Yeah. There's a thrill to it. Right. Granted, it sucks if you lose money. But like that guessing right and like winning. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I know there's different strategies and all this, but I don't give a fuck. You got to be lucky. That plays into it. There is, um, I mean, there's, it's a skill. It honestly is because there's luck that plays into it a lot, but blackjack, there's people who count cards. There's people who, you know, have their own set system. There's rules to gambling. Like one in blackjack, for example, and this rule sucks. If a dealer, like if, if you get a 12, right, that's a very, that's like the worst fucking blackjack hand in the world because you have to hit on a 12. You have to hit. Because a dealer is going to have something over a 12 and they're automatically going to beat you. But if you get a 10, you automatically, that's a bust. So you lose. So it's like, it doesn't matter how much money you have out. That's a rule of blackjack. Like say you bet $100 and you get a 12, you have to bet. So you're, or not bet, but you got to take, you have to hit. You have to take a card. And I mean, that's like one of those things. I will say that was a cool moment. Jordan witnessed it. Um, I think it was Jordan or was it that? No, I'm pretty sure it was Jordan. I was down. down that bad. whole cruise, I was down. <laughs> and I was like, ah, fuck it. I was like, I had a $25 chip left. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go bet one hand of blackjack. I was like, if I lose this $25, what does it matter? So I bet $25 and I was like, watch, I'm going to get a blackjack right here. Boop, got a blackjack. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Walked away. I was like, all right, see you guys later. Uh, Walk, left the table. I was like, I'm not betting no more. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. And that happened also the last day in roulette. The last day in roulette, after getting my ass kicked the whole cruise, I'm like, fuck it. I'm not even going to play with a lot of money. Kept winning. I was like, well, look at this. Well, but, there you go. You know, I think it's fun to gamble every now and again. Here it is in June. We're, we just went on that cruise, what, in January? Yeah. God, Six seems months, like for baby. fucking, seems like forever ago. Yeah, and then I went to go see Travis Scott literally a few days afterwards. Travis. That was a pretty eventful week. Yeah, that's because of my gambling problem. That's the reason I didn't go. So. <laughs> see, you fucking gamble and don't win anything. You fucking. Yeah, you miss but out I mean, on, on uh, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. I didn't get no FOMO from that. I wish I would have went with y'all because, you know. Yeah, that shit was that, lit. That was, was that was cool that lit. you guys all got to go together. But I was like, eh. Club seats. It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, that shit was nice. It was fun. Good time. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that FOMO like if shit. You, if you wouldn't have went, you wouldn't have yeah, felt Yeah, I wouldn't have fucking. Like, that's like, how I felt. Right, I was right, like, like for, for like that, literally the moment you guys were there to like after the concert, I was like, damn, I should have went. Yeah. 
And then the day after, I was like, eh. Yeah, I, it comes. It, I like, I'm not okay. I'm not gonna say that it does. Like, I don't get that feeling, but it literally yeah, comes and that goes. Feeling. It comes and goes like a fucking fart in the wind. Correct. Like, I do, like it does not stay for long. Like, there's people that will fucking like that. I I know that have been like, oh my god, the like I wish shit. I would have gone to this shit fucking two years ago. I'm like. Yeah. Oh my god! Like, Honestly. bro, chill out. <laughs> like, fucking yeah. get over it. You gotta. You didn't go. That's like, the thing. I don't boo-hoo. dwell. I don't dwell on shit. So, like, good or bad, if something happened and it's in the past, you gotta like you gotta keep, keep looking moving. forward. The, There's nothing you could do you about know? it. The shit is done. And if you really want to take it to a different level, like. Most of this shit, like, there's really no proof of any of this shit happening anyways. So, like, if you missed out on something or, like, you didn't go, like... What shit? What do you mean? Just anything, like... Like, memories and shit? Well, there's memories, but, like... Let me see how I can fucking word this better. This so, is, like... This is my life. That happened. That but happened here. <laughs> it did happen, but there's video <laughs> proof of that. <laughs> but, like, a lot of this shit is, like... Let me... I'm trying to think, like... Like, it's going to happen. These things are going to happen. There's going to be events that happen, things that come up that you can't go to and shit like that. But, like, at the end of the day, those things only live as... They live on as much as you give them, like, time and energy to live on. You know what I mean? So, like, if you don't give it the time and energy, it's kind of like it didn't even fucking happen, essentially. Well, and on even a bigger scale than that, think of all the things, like, uh, we and people we know and we love put into, like consideration or think about or do in the grand scheme of shit yeah. in 10, 20, 30 years. All right. We'll, we'll go a decade for, or not a decade. We'll go a century or half century from now, right? Mm-hmm. 50 years from now, a hundred years from now when we're gone, no one's going to remember this shit. Real shit. No one's going to, we're going to be a fucking, we might, if we're lucky, be a couple pictures on the internet still, <laughs> but I mean, we'll be, Hey, no hangover. It's timeless. <laughs> I mean, but, to uh, take it even a step further, there's people that deny the Holocaust. <laughs> so, like, if there's people denying the Holocaust, that's like, crazy. Hey, you can get over not going to a fucking concert. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> just, you know, people just are crazy. putting things in perspective. I mean, America, you know I mean? <laughs> America and just the world that we live in. The world we live in is fucking yeah. berserk. It is wild. I mean, shit, speaking of war, that was a. Unintended segue. There the was. fucking what was that law? That the was a random. That? All right. So apparently, and it actually, I looked into it a little more. Um, I I don't know if anyone's seen Cardi B even fucking posted. Jesus about it. Christ! Before you even get into any of that, I fucking hate. I don't hate a lot of things in this world. I'm a pretty loving guy, understanding guy, uh, but I fucking it fucking irks me to my core when I'm scrolling on Instagram. And I see Cardi B fucking chiming in on some political shit. And then what even pisses me off even more is when I swipe because I'm like, oh, like. What did she say? Yeah. And then <laughs> it, like when I hear what she's saying, I just feel like I'm just dumber. Oh, I man. just feel. And listen, I'm not the smartest guy. I say dumb shit all the time. If we have fucking over 200 episodes of this shit to fucking prove all the dumb shit that I say. But like, That's God cool. damn. Jesus Christ, if I have to hear another fucking Cardi B take on some fucking political shit, I might just fucking blow my brains out. Oh, well. Because geez Louise, like that, this is this is what we've come to. Yeah. Fucking making headline news of what Cardi B said about whatever fucking yeah. bill being passed. And like, well, I mean, there was, <laughs> so I've, I've been looking in, into it. So I don't know exactly what bill passed. I saw that at uh, <laughs> Los Angeles. House of Representatives <laughs> had put a um, bill into motion about like, and again, me and Eric talked about this right before we started recording. I don't recall doing this. He doesn't recall doing <laughs> it. Apparently, we might be incriminating uh, ourselves right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Re- well, we've we've aged out the at this point. FBI is going to come crashing through uh, these fucking we've windows. We've aged out by this point, but uh, from the ages of eighteen to twenty-five, you're supposed to enroll every u.s citizen and who knows we might have done it and just not remembered yeah but i mean that was a while ago you're supposed to in over 10 years for me yeah over 10 years for me oh yeah i'll be 29 (laughs) well 10 years i guess whatever you're right Uh, on that right on the cusp but uh so apparently everyone 18 to 25 you're supposed to register to be in the selective service 
What is that shit called? Selective service. What? Yeah, for the draft, essentially. You're supposed to enroll yourself into the draft. So if we yeah. end up if we end up going into war, we have another world war or something like that, that, you have to be look. you have to be like between the what is it, the ages of eighteen and twenty six, right? You're I think eligible it was 18 to eighteen to twenty five originally. Yeah, you're eligible to be drafted to well, into I the army to go to, to war. They, I think they add on a year, so now it's eighteen to twenty six. Oh, right. And then I think that's what it was basically. They added a year, so it's now it's eighteen to twenty six. Still, we timed out regardless. Yeah. But <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they made it to where that's the age where if you're in that range and there hasn't been a draft in, you know, since half World a century, War II, I think, right? No, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam, War. you're right. So in half a century, they haven't uh, actually called this into motion or anything. Hasn't been a draft. No one's, you know, needs to go to war, needs to fight for their country. That's more been voluntary. Yeah. And even even now, I mean, it's even with a draft, the draft is to make that age group, you know, they have to do it, but it's still a voluntary thing. It's will you fight for your country? Will you protect your homeland? All that. And not to be hypocritical, because, I mean, even us, we're, you know, we're making a podcast right now. This isn't like the craziest athletic thing we could do. This isn't like all that. (laughs) But what Cardi B was saying, which I thought was fucking hilarious and it puts shit into perspective because it's kind of funny. She was talking about just this, these generations, men as a whole, right? Masculinity has been attacked for a long time in America. Yeah. We'll in, give, I mean, we'll give it a nice round number of 10 years. The past 10 years has been being attacked basically. And it's what toxic I mean, masculinity. and what I mean by that is like, there's all this woke movement and I'm not saying men are always right. And what, like, that's not what I'm saying at that's all. What I'm, no, I'm, just <laughs> I'm not saying that at all, but like, a man's job is to, you know, protect, provide, provide, provide and, protect. Yep. and, you know, make sure his family, his self, his friends, you know, whatever the case may be, are all good. Like you're, you're supposed to look out for people. You're supposed to watch over those who can't watch over themselves. And even, and I'm not saying women can't watch over themselves, but as a man, like it's our role and it's our job to protect you. That is just how we feel. That's in our DNA. That's, what we were born to do is protect the people we love. So Cardi B's statements were saying that this, you know, age of men, that group, 18 to 26 year old, there is a lot of, you know, people that are famous nowadays. There's a lot of TikTokers. There's a lot of video game streamers. There's, there's a lot of people who are in this realm of, I'd say, you know, the digital world and who don't do like physical labor, for example, but are like streamers, TikTokers, dancers, singers. I mean, there's all kinds social of social media influencers. Correct. But she was basically saying like, if that <coughs> age group was to be drafted, America would be fucked. And I kind of agree with it, but at the same time, I don't because yes, that is that group of people, but I'm, st- I'm sure in this, you know, in the U S there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in the U S that men are still men. There is a lot of woke movement. There is a lot of, I ain't going, you know, I'm not going to front and say there ain't a lot of pansy ass people, but there is. But I still think there is a lot of men that are men and that if shit did hit the fan, you know, that would be prepared to fight for their country. Your primal instinct would kick in. in. Like, or if especially, and heaven forbid, knock on wood, like I hope this shit never happens. If anyone was to literally have an attack on American soil, right? I'm sure there'd be hundreds of thousands of people lining up ready to go fight for their country, not because they want to fight for their country, because I don't think many people at this day and age want to fight for their country. There's a lot of wrongs that have been done. There's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of just fucked up shit that the government does that a lot of people don't want to get behind. But at the same time, once you endanger the people we love, that's a whole different story. Like you said, primal instincts take over, and that's when you're like, all right, I'd be willing to go fight for my country. I'd be willing to die for the people that I love. They might not think of the country as a whole. They might just be thinking about themselves or like their group. Mm-hmm. But like if it came, you know, say something did happen, right? And it was like, oh, I protect my family or no one else will. I'm going. Like yeah. that's a simple like, all right, well, I'm going. And like I like we said right before we just started this. <laughs> I did it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I moved Listen, for that one. When you send me that and you like, 
Like when you sent me that topic and you did say like we would be fucked. I thought about it for a second. I'm like, oh, that's just Jacob being fucking pessimistic. All that shit. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just Jacob being on his shit. But then I thought about it and I thought about like, you know, the 25, 26 year old people that I know, you know, in that age group. I started thinking, I'm like, damn, we would be a little fucked. (laughs) I I talked to, I I had mentioned that to Jordan before. Like when I sent it to you, I talked to Jordan today and I was talking about like what we were going to talk about. And imagine, and this is this presidential election, 2024. Yeah, which I'm. Imagine in four years from now, right? Say the draft. Yeah. His brother would be 18. Yeah. Like. That's well, I'm thinking of my brother, correct. and he's and I, he's 25. So figured, I'm like, that's what I figured. Jeez, you're thinking of people you know. He's thinking of that, <laughs> and I'm like, there's kids that we know that it's like, they wouldn't be ready. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, shit. I don't think I would have been ready at that time either. Well, the only difference I feel that, as far as like, because uh, well, obviously I know myself, I know you, I know Jordan, you know things like that. Is that we were still like. I mean, I don't think there's too many things in this world that are going to prepare you for war and going to prepare you for that type of... I don't think really anything prepares you for war. But not that we're the most, like, grittiest people and the most fucking rough around the edges, but we have done things in our life, and we do. And and I can speak for me and you in this particular moment right now that we still do things that keep us grounded, keep us, you know, keep us honest, keep us a little, you know, keep that grittiness toward... Yeah. towards us for me and Jordan it's like listen I played football with that man so yeah. like you know that's one of the most violent sports there is you know regardless of what country you're in or anything like that so I've seen you know I've and you know again like I've seen Jordan get to that place where I know like all right bet like <laughs> like if shit goes down like I know I can rely on him to yeah. fucking take care of some shit it's like yeah <laughs> Y'all have seen each other fight yeah. once or twice or whatever. But like, but not even like, not even just me and him. Like, just like I said, when we were playing yeah, football, like he, we could see, like we've seen each other get to that point. We've seen each other and at, at our most, I mean, at our most, in our most primal, essentially, yeah. especially when we we're playing football, especially, yeah, you know, like when, when, when things pride, are getting heated and shit pride, like that, like you got your team <clears throat> or even, and this, I this, mean, listen, Jordan, is, Jordan has saved, there was, sorry to cut you off, but there was one time we were, pl- it was in a game, we were playing Winter Springs. It was very heated. You know, it was very back and forth. And some dude, fought, he threw a punch at me, but the ref didn't catch it. And I was in that fucking boom. All right, bet. And literally mid swing, Jordan fucking grabbed me and pulled me away. If I, and the ref would have saw it. If he would have fucking seen that, that would have been a six game suspension. But like, it's moments like that, that you kind of see like, you see people's character. You see when shit hits the fan. What you know, you know what people gonna are do. gonna go. You know, fight, flight or fight mode. You know, it's funny and shit like that. So like, I mean, we've both seen each other like go into the fight mode when it's when yeah. shit hits the fan and like. The only thing in my life that I have FOMO about. You want to know what it is? It's pretty funny. That fucking fight when that me and Ryan. Me. I'm so mad that I wasn't there. Bro, that I'm so bro, mad. Listen, even day. even Ryan was in there throwing punches. Till this day, bro, that is the only that thing shit I'm actually was, mad about. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's, that's not, one of my best, not one of my best moments. But because that's what's hilarious. I haven't got FOMO <laughs> over anything, right? Bro, it's because it was with shit. the boys. That's what I'm saying. With the boys. Like, Damn it. Like, y'all fought without me? Like, where were you? were in Washington, right? I, pro- I think I lived in Washington at the time. Yeah, that shit was because, like, if not, there's no way I would have been here. At that point, there. like, by the time, because I'm not going to, I'm the one that escalated the situation. Like, Jordan, you know, had his little, you know, said his little words or whatever, but he Jor- fucking. Yeah, Jordan diffuses it every now and again. And, but he, but he kept on walking. Yeah. And because so let me paint the picture for you real quick. I don't know if whoever's been downtown Orlando, whoever fucking is listening to this. There's a bar downtown that's like has like three or four like clubs, like bars, like wasn't it like Arrow or some shit you guys were in? It was in patio. But like we made that round of going into social, patio going up to Arrow. Yeah. yeah, going up to Arrow, coming back down to patio. Shit. And we were just walking through to get by, like to get outside to go wherever we were the fuck we were going. So it's Jordan in front of me, like a few steps. I'm in the middle, and then Ryan's a few steps behind me. So I see, like, Jordan's walking through, like, creating the path, and I see that he's, like, starts chirping with somebody real quick. So by the time I get to it, Jordan's already a few steps ahead, and I go, I'm like, and I don't know what it was. Like, there, I, like I get in these moments, in these moods, like, again, I'm a pretty peaceful guy, docile guy. I don't want to fucking, you know, 
I want to keep things as peaceful as possible. Rare times he wants to hurt somebody. That was one of those times that I was just like, I still get in those moods where I was like, damn, somebody trying me like make my fucking day. Oh, well, some dude made my fucking day. And like, he was talking that shit. I pushed him. He pushed me. No, he pushed me. I pushed him. He went to go push me back. And at that point, once I saw him like put his arms up to come push me, my fucking fist was already fucking flying. Yeah, I don't, I've and never I punched him. Push. Some guy fucking came, punched me in the neck. And literally like fucking two seconds later, Jordan comes and tackles the shit out of somebody and clears the whole dance floor. And he looks up and like there's nobody around him and the confusion on his face was like, oh, oh what the fuck? Like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And the funny thing is, is that like I started this essentially like I escalated it to that point and the security came and escorted Jordan out. And I, if I wanted to, I could have stayed in there and just fucking been chilling, fucking dancing Bye, and shit. But I was literally just following behind him like I was the one es- helping them escort Jordan out. And then, yeah, but. That's funny. I definitely have those moments. That's for the-, the one time in my <laughs> life I had FOMO, though. They called me and told me, and I'm like, what the fuck? Even even Ryan was in there throwing some punches, we've been, too. We've been downtown so many times, and I'm not saying I would just want to fight downtown because that's never really been gets, Yeah, I mean, and plus, especially nowadays, you don't really know what people well, are what packing you, downtown. You never know. Like, like that, someone could pull a knife. Someone could shoot you. Like, you know, Hey, listen, let somebody pull a knife. Somebody pulls I, a gun, I, then it's like, oh, fuck. Well, we say that. I still wouldn't want a knife pulled, but at the same time, <laughs> I, I would be much more willing <laughs> yeah. to fight somebody with a knife than someone with a gun. I'd be like, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> like, the <laughs> last words would probably be like, you're a bitch. That's the fucking. And then they'd shoot me. <laughs> that's the distance closer right there. And knife, you got to get in close quarters. And I like close quarters. And again, I've never fought anybody with a knife, but like, listen, I've sliced myself up a couple times yeah, on I've accident. Been, <laughs> it's like, same. ah, I've fuck. been cut my fair share. <laughs> Bring it, bitch. Unless they fucking full on stab me, like, oh fuck. Even then that, if they full on brought it, I'd catch that. Uh, I like I to. Th- I like to think I would. I but feel like I would. Who knows? <laughs> We're gonna let that. We're not gonna let that slide. That's a conversation for another day. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the one time I'm like, damn it. Uh, but shit. besides that, I don't get. But yeah, I mean, back to the original point. There, like, there, there is that. Like, you could kind of tell. Like, and we've we've mentioned this a lot of times that like we are kind of like that generation gap to where we still like we were introduced to social media and the internet and like video games and technology, but we still we're in that we gray area of experience. going outside sure. riding your bikes like hey dad or hey mom i'm going outside to ride my bike and they'd be like all right come back at this time and you don't have a phone so you're out just Correct. in the world fucking that's riding what, wherever what. the fuck you're going yep. and they have no idea yep. you could be a fucking two three five miles down the fucking road was. and they're just like oh yeah <laughs> like, mean, could, same was same bro <laughs> like, oh my god there's no that's what it, that's why i think it's crazy because now it's like there's tracking devices. There's yeah. phones. Like you can. You're your in constant know, communication, and which is a good thing. I feel like it is good. Is a good thing that parents know where their children are. But at the same time, like we grew up in a time where there was no fucking phone. Like unless there was a house phone. I mean, there yeah. was. You know, the parents had cell phones, of course. But like, unless we're getting to somebody's house and using their house phone to call, we didn't have any fucking phone. Yeah. Like, I would dro- go all through Deer Run. It was a lot easier to get off the grid and fucking... Yeah, I was riding my bike down fucking Redbug, down... I was in all kinds of areas where it's like... Yeah. It wasn't sketchy then because it's like the world was okay then. Well, Nowadays, it's well like listen, I'm not going to say it was okay are, then, but it was like, it was a lot more... It was... You, you, had to, you had to be more willing to just give that trust. Yeah. As opposed to now where it's like you don't have to because there is phones, there is this, there is that. It's a lot easier to communicate yeah. with, you know, you you give your kid a phone and this, that, whatever. Yeah. Like at that point, you had to like either you're going to shelter the fuck out of the kid and not let him go anywhere. Or it's like if you're going to let him go anywhere, you just have to kind of like cross your fingers and hope that like, you know, I mean, I've done like enough nowadays, teaching to my kid that correct. they're not going to get into too much of dumb shit. Yeah, I feel like nowadays it's more of like you have to uh, ins- instill the right kind of. I don't know, morals, like teachings in your children, like granted kids. And I feel like it, this is everybody. Every We learn in a bunch of ways. We learn from our parents. We learn from school. And then it was us putting in our own opinions. experiences. And like, so it's, it's basically those three things that taught us our life lessons. We taught ourselves some, we got taught some and our parents told us some. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we, we use a little bit from each. And it's just like nowadays, I still think that goes on, but I feel like it might be a little less people teaching. And like then 
you have the school system teaching and people learning on their own experience because I'm not to call anybody out, but I feel like a lot of people are soft as shit nowadays. No, I mean, I would agree. And just like, just like what Listen, I'm not gonna on the story where people can't just make fun of each other. Like there's that, sh- uh, you know, you can't make fun of somebody or not to be like, you know, cause the anti-bullying thing that happened with us. Yeah. Like bullying was perfectly fine until our, mm. you know, <laughs> that happened when I was in like what? Third grade. I want to say it was like <laughs> third grade where anti-bullying came out and like, it's, God only knows what it is now, but I just feel like people are soft. Yeah. I mean, I agree that people are more sensitive to shit and like um, something recently that happened, like to me, like when you go into business with somebody, it's a lot more direct. It's a lot more like if I have an issue, I'm going to tell you what my issue is and then we'll sift through the bullshit afterwards. But like, if I feel like you're misleading me or doing some shit or whatever, I'm just going to tell you right away because if not, then especially in business stuff, you can, it, you know, that can kind of muck up the relationship and muck up the relationship, the quicker. business relationship a lot quickly, a lot more quicker. So, you know, I had to get on the phone with somebody and kind of tell them like, Hey, listen, like, I'm not saying you're doing it, but you know, given everything that's gone up into this point, it feels like you're running some type of game on me right now. Like, I'm just telling you how I feel based off what we've been talking about, based off text, based off phone conversations. Like it's nothing personal, but like, this is what it feels like. And immediately they were like, Oh man, like, why would you even think that? Like, it's like, it's like, well, I'm telling you why I'm thinking it like that. This is why, this is why I'm thinking it now. If it's, if I'm wrong, just tell me. And then again, that's when we can kind of start clearing the air a little bit, but like, People are so quick to be like, oh, and take things so personal and be so like, oh, my God, like, why would you even think that or whatever? And like, listen, there's been times where people have accused me of shit. And it's like, whoa, well, that's not the case. Like, I can see where you're coming from. But like yeah, this, and this and this. Here. And then you fucking that's it. I also understand that I'm a lot more direct than a lot of people. And I'm just like, again, if I if I'm feeling some type of way or if I feel like I'm someone's trying to fucking pull a fast one on me, I'll just say it right there, because yeah. it's like, if not, then. I yeah, feel like that leads to swept under the rug. Then a lot more things can be, you know, assumed, uh, yeah. misinterpreted, Correct. interpreted in one way. And it's like, so it's like, listen, like, I'm just going to say it how it is. And I had to explain it. Like, it's like, listen, I know I can come out, kind of come off a little bit rough and shit like that. But like, I don't intend to, I don't, I'm not intending to take personal shots at you. It's just like, listen, I'd rather just fucking tell you what, how I feel, tell you what it is, tell you what I feel like is going on. And if I'm wrong, then it's like, all right, my bad. You yeah. know, we'll keep it fucking moving. But, but you could always, but the thing is, is that when you fucking out. call out people like that it, again, and especially in business and when you're, you know, when they when it's that type of relationship, when you can, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of gauge what someone's character is. It's got, it's a lot easier to gauge whether they're trying to bullshit you or not. Cause if you call them out on the spot, you can tell, I mean, in any situation, if you call somebody out on the spot, you can tell when somebody's trying to come up with some bullshit yeah. in their head, or if they're really trying to be like, nah, like that's not what it was, this, that, whatever. And like, all right, we move yeah, or forward. Or be truthful. It. Yeah. Or be like, yeah, I mean, I did kind of fuck up there, but. You know. And, and, and exactly. It was that, like I said, what I had to say, they told me what they had to tell me. I'm like, all right, bet. Like, Let's just, we're all in yeah, let's just keep a clear line of communication. Like if, 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 if a thing is going on, we need to be fucking clear as fuck. So then I'm not jumping to B, C, D conclusion. Yeah. So like, just tell me what's going on. Let's keep an open line of communication. And you know, for the most part, things are going to be pretty hunky dory, but I feel like a lot of people, again, like whether it is business relationship, you know, romantic relationship, friendship, family, like a lot of people are so quick to, Oh my gosh. Like, I can't believe you would even think that. But like in reality, like how many times have we heard? I mean, if you look throughout history, how many people, how many times have people been fucked over by people that they thought they would never be fucked over by? Or how many times have people like pulled out the rug from people that you would never think it's like, so it's like, People are always saying like, yeah, it's like if people are always saying like you have to, you know, we have all this history to fucking look back on. Like, why don't people learn from history and shit like that? It's like, well, that's me learning from my history. Yeah, my past. Yeah, I've had people that I love, care for dearly that I thought would wouldn't fuck me over. And they did. Now, the level of it, you know, it might vary. But like, yeah, of course. Listen, it's like I'm not I can't put anything past anybody because, again, at the end of the day, we're all human. We're going to make some type of mistake. We'll have some lapse in judgment. We'll have some some type of shit. And then 
depending on whether you you w- you're free. really gonna own up to that shit or not, then that for me at least, because I'm a pretty forgiving person, if you're willing to own up to it and just kind of like own your shit, then it's like all right, you know, well, shit happens. Like, like you always say, people aren't against you. They're for themselves, baby. They are for themselves. That is the greatest quote ever said in life. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like people don't mean to do you wrong, but shit happens. You know, you gotta. And this is for everybody. Everyone looks after themselves, and sometimes uh, looking after yourself fucks over someone you care about deeply. And you're mm-hmm. like, I didn't mean to do it. I really didn't. Yeah, facts. But facts. Shit happens. That's real shit. We're about uh, real shit. I ever wrote. An hour and ten minutes in. Uh, we can cut it if you want. I mean, talk about the rest later because we. Can like I said, Conor McGregor is not fighting ever again, and I'm gonna. St- I don't care what they already have the fight scheduled for August. I don't give a fuck. I'm standing on that hill and I'm dying on it. Nah, I'm gonna say he fights again in August. Um, <coughs> quick though, uh, Chael Chael Sonnen says that Connor didn't have an injury. He pulled out of this fight because he's in rehab. That is interesting to me. Makes sense. I mean, I fuck, mean, he's fucking six hundred million dollar net worth. Fucking boys drinking. He's Body. been drinking. There's been videos of him fucking coked out, fucking talking to people. Like, yeah. it makes plenty of sense. He's Plus, been partying. But I, anyways, 303 real quick. We're doing this quickly, I guess, to finish this up. 303 card. It was Connor's card. Connor left it. What does Dana and Hunter do? They produce a they fucking bring in banger. The fucking the saviors again. They produce a banger to read off this card for you. <coughs> I'll start at the bottom. Uh, first fight of the main card, Ian Gary versus Michael Page. Michael Venom Page. Who you got in that? Give me Ian Pred- Gary. Prediction, man. Okay, 14 or no. Goes to 15 or no. All right, then you got a, win- a women's bantamweight. Uh, Silva versus Ches- Chesun. I've never seen either one of these women in my life. So That's me. I got Carlos Uelborg over Anthony Smith, though. Damn, I wanted him. I wanted to see Carlos beat the shit out of Jamal Hill too. I like Jamal Hill, but after this whole fucking Poetan shit and the way he's been yeah. acting, like he his stock has gone down for me. Do you got uh who you got in the Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez? Ooh, that's Lopez. gonna be a good fight too because that Lopez guy can fucking yeah. bang. Um, who's the favorite? Does uh, it have favorites? I think uh, Brian Ortega's favorite. Show me the favorite, but Brian Ortega probably. Give me. I'm gonna go with the underdog. Give me Lopez. Oh shit. All right. That's a that's a that's gonna be an interesting card. You got one striker versus a grappler, so yeah. you know. Who do you got in the main event then? Your two favorite <sighs> fighters that's, fighting again. That's rough. I saw that and Around I was like, two. it was like the fucking devil right. and angel on my shoulder. I was happy, but I'm like, not again. So you got Alex Pereira versus Yuri. Um Ooh. Do you think it ends the same way, or do you think Yuri's been in that darkness? Long enough that he wins the fight. Oh, man. It's hard to bet against Poetan, man. It's hard for me to bet against him. I've already seen Yuri lose enough times to... He's only lost one. I mean, Alex <laughs> Perr, well, he's technically he's 10-2 and two in his MMA career. But, I mean, in the UFC, I think he only lost one time, which was to Izzy. Yeah. And Yuri has lost twice. Well, I guess he didn't lose, but he fucking... He's 34-1. and one. His... Uh, MMA career. Ooh. Mm. I'm going to sit on that one. I still have time. Yeah. I'm going to sit on that one. That All one's right. too close oh. to the heart. Predictions <laughs> will be out on the day of the fight. So you'll see where we're uh, at. Oh, shit. And uh, just like that, another episode of No Hanger Podcast. In the fucking books. Came to you live but you won't see it live so it came to you <laughs> in a couple of com- will come to you in a couple of days yeah i mean it'll probably from I yours truly yeah. we'll get it out as soon as we can but um yeah we took a couple shots had some good conversation and um i even got freaking a round of applause hey <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.